So now that we've reviewed mitosis, we're going to jump to meiosis, which has two phases, okay, and then it will reduce the chromosome number during germ cell division. So in order to make gametes, egg cells, sperm cells, uh, haploid uh, cells from diploid cells, we're going to have to somehow split or reduce that chromosome number. So the first step of uh, meiosis during the growth cycle and then the S uh, phase of the cell. And then when the cell is uh, moving into meiosis, okay, you have your duplicated pair here. So you have your uh, mother's uh, chromosome one and so your father's chromosome one have both been duplicated. And now this group is gonna stick together as opposed to mitosis when they be both just be pulled apart and that be the end they're going to form what's called a either a tetrad or a bivalent, okay? And so you've got your um, duplicated pair of homologous chromosomes, each of which has the two sister chromatids. Now in meiosis one, the homologous chromosomes are separating, okay? So this cell here is actually haploid, even though it has two copies, they're, they're the identical copies. They're not actually two sets of the same chromosome. It's just one chromosome duplicated. So during meiosis one, we're undergoing reductional division. We've gone from 2N to 1N, from diploid to haploid in this first split. In the meiosis two, it's pretty much uh, mitosis again. It's a simple, okay, the sister chromatids are separating and getting pulled to opposite ends of the cell and new cells are forming, except in this case, we're, we're taking haploid cells that had two copies and making them haploid cells that only have one copy. Okay, so this is equational division. We have we have not changed the chromosome number in meiosis two. We've just separated out those two copies into their own cells. Okay. So kind of again in a more complicated overview here, we've got meiosis one, which is the uh, tricky, the complicated one. Okay, this is where the chromosomes actually are all lined up together. The tetrads form, crossing over occurs. Okay. Um, during which the chromosomes become really condensed and visible, just like in prophase of other sections too. They're aligned across the middle, but they are lined up in tetrads with the uh, maternal-paternal pairs um, combined. And during meiosis one is when the homologs or the homologous chromosomes separate. Okay? The sister chromatids are staying together during meiosis one. Okay, so that's a reductional division there, separating the maternal and paternal chromosomes. And then my animation did a funny thing and disappeared meiosis too. But that's where we have our equational division where we're separating the copied sister chromatids. Okay, so looking a little further at meiosis one, okay, every pair of homologs is gonna cross over at least once. This is an obligate crossover. Okay? The homologs are held together while the spindle pulls them apart. And then we can move on to meiosis two where our chromatids the sister chromatids now in our haploid cells are separating and aligning. Okay? So this is similar to mitosis, except we've only got one duplicated homologous chromosome. Okay? The same proteins are actually performing the same functions in both mitosis and meiosis too. Very, very similar. So one key uh, feature here in meiosis one that we have not seen in mitosis and does not occur in meiosis two is this idea of a bouquet formation. So for a long time, people didn't quite know exactly how tetrads were formed, but you know, lots of experiments and, and staining later, uh, we find that actually all the chromosomes, uh, one end of each chromosome gets kind of pulled to one end near the cell membrane in order to line up with those centrioles. And that brings the homo homologous chromosomes or the homologs into proximity with each other. And then they start recognition pairing um, and lining up together. And so the pairing center has been found in most eukaryotes, but has been seen in uh, mainly in like worms and flies where it's easy to watch these occur. So once the homologous chromosomes have paired up uh, at that, uh, with that bouquet formation, they start to like almost zipper up in what's called the synaptonemal complex where the homologous chromosomes uh, are lined up, uh, sort of the sister chromatids are paired and between the paternal and the maternal pairs here, we form this, this four chromosome complex. Okay, and everybody, it's, it's referred to as almost this zipper, okay? And one of the crazy things is that in widely different organisms, this distance, this actual formation of the synaptonemal complex is incredibly conserved, 
Okay. So they, uh, the central, you have the two homologs, one on each side, and you have the central region, and that's what the synaptonemal complex is referring to. There's a whole bunch of proteins that are uh, helping these align and create this pairing, which is gonna help make sure that the crossovers that occur are in the right places. So in C. elegans, a nematode, people have been uh, studying this formation of uh, synaptonemal complex and the homologous chromosomes lining up together. So at the beginning, you've got the two homologs, uh, distinct and unpaired. Green sequences are paired and then the rest haven't quite yet, but over time, they start to uh, synapse together. You see eventually at the end here, down in G and H, the entire pair of homologs is synapsed. It looks like one thick chromosome. They're that close together. So for meiosis, the really the most important and complicated step is prophase of meiosis one, also referred to as prophase one, okay, where the centrosome picks a pole there, the chromosomes are extended, they pair the bouquet formation here where the ends pair up and the homologs home log, home recognize each other and start to pair up and zip up, okay? And the chromosomes start compacting as they synapse, they form that uh, conjugation with each other. And then the crossing over occurs, and then we have the centrosomes duplicating, separating, beginning to form a spindle, and that's where we have those chiasmata there, where we have our, our some of the swaps uh, between P and Q arms of the chromosomes. So when we get to crossing over, uh, our, we've, we have our synapse formed, our homologs have lined up, okay, and then we get double-stranded DNA breaks, uh, which is um, shortened as DSBs, okay? So there's a specific uh, enzyme, SPO11, that is causing these double-stranded DNA breaks, okay? Uh, the location is highly regulated. These are not random. We found that they, they tend to occur in the same places on the same chromosomes, okay? And then DA synthesis occurs, and the homolog is used as the template to repair the break as opposed to the original strand. Right, so they get, there's a swap here, and the swap, the very point there we have our crossing over is called the holiday junction, which I believe box 6.2 goes into great detail about, but we're not going to worry too much about the exact details of that. But a holiday junction is formed, okay, and thus when the DNA is repaired, you end up having one sister chromatid having some DNA sequences from each homolog, okay. So these so thanks to electron microscopy, we can actually see this in DNA molecules. Okay, so here we see uh, two, this is the tetrad here, uh, two homologous chromosome pairs have lined up. Here are the darker regions here, the centromeres where the sister chromatids are attached. And then we see two instances of chiasma here between the various uh, DNA strands. So kind of represented here. Okay, so the kinetic core is the area where the spindle fibers are actually attaching to the DNA strands, okay? And it has an inner and an outer face. The inner face uh, here is where the sister chromatids are gonna align with each other, okay? And the spindle fibers are attaching to the outer face here, okay? So now in um, meiosis one here, the chromatids are facing, from the sister chromatids are facing in the same direction because they're being pulled together. The homologs are being pulled as a pair, okay? So kinetic cores from homologs are facing in opposite directions during meiosis one, okay? And so the spindle pulls the homologs apart. But then once we hit meiosis two, the kinetic core orientation flips, okay? And then the kinetic cores are facing opposite poles. The inner faces are aligning and the outer faces are being, um, are opposite. And so uh, they're facing the opposite direction and then the spindle is gonna pull these sister chromatids apart at that point. 